Civil wars, communist revolutions, corruption, explosive volcanoes, earthquakes, floods, droughts, industrial sugar production. Central America has seen dramatic turmoil, but when it comes to rum, the flavours are a little less complicated and revered by many around the globe. It's time to explore. Let's dive in. Hello, Hendo here and welcome to Central America, rum making between Mexico and South America. Key points about these rums, history defines the region by sugar production, rum was secondary, but also perfect cane growing climate, home to the Mayan civilization. Central America is influenced by the Cocos Tectonic Plate, 75 volcanoes and Pacific winds blowing eastward over Panama and Papageo Jet from West Caribbean funneling up the Cordela Mountains near Lake Nicaragua. I'll explain the rum influences of each country. Some are made from concentrated sugarcane juice called virgin sugarcane honey. Laws restrict a higher alcohol spirit. Some have no additives, others do. There's buyer beware when it comes to the numbers in the bottle. That being said, Central American rums are some of the most popular in the world. Let's take a deep dive. Central America comprises of seven tropical countries. Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua and Panama. Let's start in Belize, facing east to the Caribbean Sea with beaches and tropical rainforests. Queixo, founded in 1950s, family operated, sells domestic rum. Travelers Liquors from Belize City originated, opening a bar called Travelers Bar. Became rum blenders, then distillery in 1960s, creating the One Barrel brand. Quite famous here. It's still operated by the Perdomo family today and they've created another brand, Tuberon uh, Rum, and sells bulk also to independent bottlers as well. More recently, in 2016, Copali or organic rum, sugarcane juice spirit, farm to bottle, single estate rum in the southern rainforest is well worth seeking out. Now onto Guatemala, defined by volcanoes and industrial scale sugar production. Now up to fourth largest exporter in the world, Guatemala labelled rum must be distilled from virgin sugar cane honey, that is a concentrated juice, fermented with a yeast derived from pineapple. But regulations aren't clear on ageing or additives. Sugar cane grows in fertile coastal plains southwest of volcanic mountains. Only one distillery, and is known as Darsa, makes Ron Zacapa and Botran rum brands, plus bulk rum for independent bottlers. Harvest is January to May, then the spirit is taken to age in the clouds, 7,500 feet above sea level. Cooler ageing climate, Guatemalan rums are aged using Sistema Solera, using four different casks, ex-bourbon casks, recharge ex-bourbon, Oloroso Sherry, PX Sherry casks, blending different ages. So the Ron Zacapa 23, not all aged 23 years, it's a mix of ages 6 to 23 years. It's very popular rum. Botran is the other brand named after the distillery founders, made by the same distillery from the first sugar cane harvest of the year. These rums are pushing super premium and have tasting notes of things like vanilla, chocolate, nuts, dried fruit. It's rich and indulgent. Next we go to El Salvador, west of Honduras and north of San Salvador, Siwantan Distillery, meaning land of the sleeping woman, a mountain that overlooks the cane fields. Made in the Siwantan Valley is the first rum created in El Salvador, founded in 2004, a division of a sugar producer and named after Mayan settlement and archaeological site is using molasses, column distilled and aged in ex-bourbon casks. Honduras on the east coast there's a brand using Rotan. It's a small Caribbean island situated 60 kilometers off the coast of Honduras for the rum story. It's called Pirate's Grog. It's not clear exactly where the rum comes from. 
I think it's Caribbean bulk blend. So I think we could call it a Honduras blender and bottler. Traveling south now is Nicaragua. The two main brands you'll see in Nicaragua are Mombaco and Flor de Caña. Sugarcane was introduced to Nicaragua in 1880. Flor de Caña distillery established in 1890 by Italian Alfredo Canessa at the base of San Cristobal volcano, the country's tallest and most active volcano. Volcanic rich soil, fertilised by ash, harvest is November to May, fields are burned before the harvest. Distilling passed down five generations of the family, its column distilled five times, aged in ex-bourbon American oak barrels sealed with plantain leaves. Minimum age is one year old for Nicaraguan rum. Uh, Flor de Caña is Spanish for sugar cane flour. There are no additives sugar free and it's presented at 40% ABV. The numbers on the bottle don't confirm its age. It's gone mainstream in the UK and Europe. Today promoted as fair trade, sustainable, natural and is celebrating their 130th anniversary. On to Costa Rica. Ron Centenario of Costa Rica was established at the end of the 1970s as Seagram of Costa Rica changed its name to Centenario in 2002 and was bought in 2016 by UDG Group based in Panama. The distillery only uses locally grown and hand harvested sugarcane and it's molasses, column distilled and solera aged in American white oak barrels for a minimum of five years. Finally in Panama, Panama's national spirit is actually Seco. It's an 80 proof white spirit distilled from sugarcane. In Panama, there are about 40 different rum brands, including some independent bottlings. The two biggest distilleries are Don Jose or Varela Hermanos, home of Ron Abello and Las Cabres. Don Jose is Panama City, is where most of the indie bottlings come from. Sugarcane and rum in Panama started with a Spanish immigrant in 1908. First a sugar mill, then distillery in Pesce. Distillery Don Jose in the fertile valley of Azuero Peninsula. The dry arch and Pacific winds all creating this stable microclimate for perfect sugarcane growing conditions. None of the cane is burned before harvest. Ron Abuelo began production in 1936 Ron Abuelo means grandfather rum in Spanish. It's still distilled with molasses from another sugar mill in Panama. Maquelon rum is named for the legendary street in the heart of Havana where the recipe comes from. Las Cabres distillery is in Herrera, first started in 1919 sugar mill like most rums and it was restored in the mid 90s by Don Pancho and makes a canna brava named after the wild sugar cane. Molasses rum made the Cuban way. Pedro Mandingo rum is promoted as Panama's first craft rum distillery set up in 2014 hand harvested cane grown on a family run farm distilled from raspadura which is unrefined sugar. Freshly concentrated cane juice. To wrap up Central America it makes some fantastic rums and many are made in the Spanish style. It's a story of industrial scale sugar production that moved into rum from easy drinking to super premium. So tell us what you think of this rum region Central America. As always welcome your feedback. I hope this was useful to you in some way and until next time thanks very much for watching.